I am James Alofs. I left the big city to build an off-grid homestead on 40 acres of Canadian wilderness. This area of Ontario has giant ridgelines, deep valleys, and pure rivers. Black bears, gray wolves, mountain lions, moose, and many forest spirits share the land. I started in November 2023. Starting with a modest 12 by 16 foot guest cabin, my goal is to build such a glorious homestead that I attract a magnificent wife, have 10 babies, and raise an Irish wolfhound. Welcome to Wild Homestead. We got absolutely shellacked by the snow gods. However, look at the wolf den. Look how little snow. Okay, look at this. This is over the tops of my boots. And then look in the wolf den. Look at this. Look at that. What a miracle. Nikes. Oh, holy. Oh, here we go again. My Lord. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Honestly, this is not worth it. I'm just, I'm just going to huff the rest. I'm just going to pick and carry them. It's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. This is too tight the whole way. Well, we almost made it. I don't think we're gonna get out of this pickle though. So that's what we're dealing with there. It's just not gonna make it. We almost made it. I'm just gonna huff, huff the rest of them. Can't, can't let these dwarvish magical machines make you lazy. Reaches. It's gotta be like four feet.
measure. This is gonna be the first log in the in the gable. And uh, we got about seven and a half inches here down to seven and a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna try to look for a pretty, like a log with zero taper. I'm gonna check back in the dense canopy over there. I remember uh, back in episode nine, I think, we're looking at a tree back there that uh, could be good for this. As opposed to looking for a field grown tree, right? Back in episode nine, we talked about this, a field grown tree that's gonna have a more aggressive taper. I think it was over this way. So I just took a peek back there. And you know what? That forest, this forest to the west, it's very dense, but I can tell that it's much younger than the forest to the north up my ATV trail because there's so many branches. There's so many branches on the trees. I think that it's like the first generation. It's all grown up together. It's much more dense than, you know, right out here in the open field. But it, it feels like all these trees have grown up together and they grew up from a completely open meadow, which kind of makes sense because this southern half of the property, before you get to the river, was a working cattle farm. So we're just passing uh, Thor's Red Oak here. I just realized there's another mortal danger to Thor's Red Oak, who I am meeting, Gundobad the dwarf, at midnight tonight <sighs> to see what my task is. But look at this. Thor's oak, I didn't even realize. You see this right here? That is a dead poplar tree. You can even see there's some kind of snag up there. But that whole thing is just gonna, and it's leaning this way. I'm gonna have to take that tree out because that's gonna fall right on Thor's red oak and smush him. Wow, so I've never seen this balsam fir before. He's kind of snagged up, that's the risk. I think you can see there's a clearing kind of right behind him. If I can try to fell him that way and he doesn't get totally snagged up, it's perfect diameter for what we need. Pray to the gods, ladies and gentlemen. This tree, this spruce, is leaning that way, the exact opposite direction I need to fell it. You see there's a little bit of a clearing this way. I'm gonna use the block and the mini sledge to try to encourage it. Oh, shit. It's leaning the wrong way. It already started leaning the wrong way. What a miracle! What a frickin' miracle! Now it's leaning the right way, but I think it's caught. It's caught on something up there. This is sketchy as all hell. Oh my god! All within sight of Thor's Red Oak. Perfect, seven incher, seven inch balsam fir.
Oh my God, it's a miracle. I just left these potatoes in the corner of the oven. The, the uh, stove, rather. They seem perfect. I have to cut these suckers open. They're not even burnt. Oh my God, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's hotter than hell, though. I gotta let this sit. Holy cow. Mmm. Oh my God. That's dangerous, man. I could have died. Tripping backwards like that. If there was a sharp stick pointing out of that tree, gotta be careful. back from the nearest town finally got these bad boys custom earplugs forest green while living in the middle of a forest not the best idea i should have got them in like hot pink oh yeah can't hear anything can only hear my heartbeat right on Strength and honor. Let's go.
I wanted Celtic sea salt, but this is all they had. Oh, nice and salty. Yeah, yeah. Now, the cool thing about Himalayan salt and Celtic sea salt is that it's not just whatever sodium chloride. There's apparently, like, in Himalayan salt, there's, like, 75 other minerals that are combined with the salt. And for Celtic sea salt, I think it's, like, 85. So it's much healthier. I mean, sodium chloride salt is something, it's an essential nutrient for your body. And some of us do have too much of it. But it's much better, it's much more balanced to your body and natural to have this Himalayan or Celtic sea salt that is not just being, like, mined from pure, you know, sodium chloride uh, sources. Sir James, over here. Gun to bad the dwarf. Sir James, your task to repay the dwarves for gifting you the magical ATV is as follows. You will start a company called Wolf Milk that manufactures wildly technical apparel, natural materials like organic cotton, wool, and hemp. The wild materials that powered the Romans, Mongols, and Vikings. Listen, man, I'm trying to survive out here. I'm building an off-grid homestead in the winter. I need another great task like I could use a fifth ex-wife. James, this is not about you. Wolf Milk is about helping the inhabitants of Midgard. Synthetic apparel materials are full of fertility and hormone-destroying chemicals. These chemicals are making humans sick, fat, and infertile. The dwarves have a wind turbine-powered factory on the Isle of Man, located between England and Ireland, that manufactures organic cotton apparel with fast worldwide shipping. Should you choose to accept this task, display the wolf milk flag at the base of your meadow. The dwarves operate a lookout tower in the pine tree on the top of the ridgeline to the south. If you fly the flag, we will start up the organic cotton apparel factory on the Isle of Man immediately. And if you don't, by the end of the day, we will take back the magical ATV. Whoa! Berries and cherries. Mm. Maple syrup. And one for my ancestors in Valhalla, heaven, or Elysium. Ooga booga.
goddamn. Oh, oh, oh.
So for the first time on this cabin, I've actually sunk a screw through the side of this log into this log here. And that's because this log being basically the base of the gables, right? This is gonna go up being the end of the roof. There are no logs sitting on top of it that are securing it to other logs. So this log will just be bolted into the log beneath. So instead of bolting this log with just four timber lock screws, which are these guys, I also sunk two big giant spikes into it as well. So there's six things fastening this log to the log beneath it. Now to give it even more support, I've secured it here and it doesn't, there's zero movement. It's extremely stiff in there. Before I sank these in there, there was a little bit, if I really rocked it, you could have it sway just a little tiny bit. So this is gonna add extra stability. Now in terms of the timber lock versus the spikes. Some folks have said, don't, you can't use these timber lock screws because these are screws and they don't have the same shear, shearing uh, support as a bolt, right? Because generally screws can break sideways relatively easily compared to something like a nail or a spike. But the thing with these timber lock screws is it's actually a hybrid between a nail and a screw. You see the screw is only right here at the bottom. It's about two inches of the 10 inches. So this part is just spike. And if you actually look at the box, it says replaces rebar or spikes. And it's actually two code. So legal code in the United States and Canada, this can for structural framing, whatever, can replace a spike. So I feel very comfortable using these. I'm going to use the spike still though on the gables as a just in case, an extra added of support, a layer of support there, um, because they are essentially, at least at this point, they're freestanding before that ridge beams up there. And then all of my rafters, which are 16 inches on center, tie the eaves beams in with the ridge beam 
in with the gables. When all of that's together, it's all going to be structurally linking up and supporting one another and keeping each other stiff. So the logs we have here are uh, 6.5 and 6 inches, but those two that I've got up so far are two 7.5 inches sitting on top of an 8 incher. So I'm going to see, I think some of the other trees that I picked out back there in that same spot that I was cutting these, I saw some guys who were, who were 7 inches. So it'd be nice to have the mid logs on the gable be 7 inches. I'm going to pop back there, see if I can pop a few of these 7 inches out. So this guy is leaning this way pretty hard, but um, I want to fell him that way because there's a meadow there, but also this tree, that tree, and that tree over there, to unlock these three trees, I'm going to need to get this guy out of the way because I can fell all three of these trees in this direction, but first I just need to take this dude out. Well, hot damn Vietnam. That was pretty easy. The gods are with me today. Today's Thor's day. That's why everything's going my way today. <laughs> Wanted to go that way, went that way. Still. Ah, wild.
Holy crap, this is high up. Whoa! Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this beast. Look at this thing. This is not a 10 by 10 foot survival cabin. This is what I, this is not, I sound like I'm Irish. I, this is not a 10 by 10 foot survival cabin. This is a 12 by 16 foot mansion. It's a log mansion. And all the room that's gonna be up there in that loft is because of this steep roof. The steep roof also means that that snow, as it gets accumulates, it just slides right off the sides. So this scaffolding is almost scary high now. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do, though, to get the rest, I'm about, I'd say, almost 50%, right around 50% on done this gable. And uh, I think, though, for the next steps to put up the further logs, I can't keep sliding them up here and then sliding them up there. I mean, I might, but what I think I'm going to have to do is build some kind of scaffolding on the inside here. I'm thinking one of two things. Let me know what I should do, you think, uh, in the comments just get some like 16 foot logs, harvest them from the forest and lay them across here. I can always end up using them for the gables down here as well. And then put plywood across them and make not only a scaffolding for working on the gables, but also I can slide the logs right up here and then slide the logs right onto the scaffolding here and then put it up on the wall. I think that'll make it a lot easier. And then I can just slide the scaffolding down and use it for the other end. So that's option one. Option two is to actually get the hanging floor joists for my sleeping loft and actually install the floor right here on this end and then over there on that end and use that floor for the sleeping loft as my platform for building up the gables. So I'm going to think about that. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do. But this is really breathtaking to me. Like, this is a huge structure. <laughs> this is serious, man. So anyways, check out wolfmelk.ca to buy our wildly technical wolf milk apparel made on the Isle of Man in a uh, renewable wind-powered plant run by the dwarves. So everybody, thank you so much for watching Wild Homestead. We'll see you next week. May the gods bless you all, both the old gods and the new.